with our health care reform, there's a move, for instance, towards the patient-centered medical home and primary care. And in the patient-centered medical home, primary care doctors are supposed to be the hub of a wheel in terms of making sure that people are getting referrals and the kind of care they need. And we know the behavioral carve-out model where physicians referred out of practice has really been a total failure. We have data in Seattle that shows that 50% of people who are referred out of primary care for mental health never go to a visit, and the mean number of visits or the median number of visits is two, um, and which really means that only half go and the other half don't get good care. Uh, whereas we've shown that you can integrate mental health care with uh, models like collaborative depression care and markedly improve quality of mental health care and outcomes within the primary care system if you integrate mental health professionals within that system. Accountable care organizations involve a hospital working in vertical integration with primary care and medical specialty care. Uh, and the, and the, the outcome they're trying to affect is to prevent hospitalizations that would, might be unnecessary with better care and also to prevent ER visits, which are very expensive. And uh, what people have shown is that among the people who are high cost patients in medical systems, um, uh, probably at least half of them have comorbid psychiatric and medical illness and uh, or comorbid substance abuse and medical illness. So provide, if you really want to save money in an ACO, um, what you want to do is integrate collaborative care approaches within primary care in order to prevent folks from getting worse from their chronic medical illnesses and having these type of hospitalizations. Partly they need to learn about what does the evidence base show and what type of models would work. And the collaborative care models, now there's over 80 trials in the literature um, showing that they're markedly effective and they tend to reduce costs. Um, so, uh, you know, healthcare systems learning about how do we develop these approaches, what is the approach like, and usually it involves a care manager supervised by a psychiatrist having a register so you can look at whether patients are improving each week and so that a psychiatrist can essentially review a caseload of a, of a uh, care manager. Care managers are often social workers or nurses. So it's really team approaches to working with people with chronic illness as opposed to expecting the primary care doctor alone to affect good care for these folks. Many um, residencies now are training psychiatrists in collaborative care and giving them experience during residency in collaborative care. I know our residency at University of Washington has started to do this. We also require our fourth year residents to work a half day a week in a primary care clinic or a medical specialty clinic and they're supervised by an experienced psychiatrist in doing that. Um, we also have courses at the APA. There are 20 um, uh, lectures, symposiums, and courses going on at this APA on collaborative depression care and integrated care approaches. Um, our, I was president of the uh, Academy of Psychosomatic Medicine last year, and we have a course there on integrated care. Um, that is a pre-course before folks come. Um, we also have uh, online courses. So um, at our uh, center at University of Washington, we have a, a website called teamcarehealth.org and you can get six hours of CME credit by doing an online course on collaborative care on a, what we call a team care approach. Um, so there are many ways, both online courses, coming to training courses at the APA, coming to the Academy of Psychosomatic Medicine, that people can be learned, begin to learn about these new approaches.